What's going on everybody? Jeremiah here from Babble in My Backyard, a pond and gardening channel packed full of how-to videos for you. We have loads of great future videos coming on this channel just that we can do within this greenhouse. I'm going to be building an indoor pond in here and the koi will be moving in here for the winter. I have an IVC tote that I've got set up and I'll show you how I'm getting that configured. Uh, we're going to do a bigger filter build than the previous filter build. So if you're a fan of the previous filter build, just stay tuned for that one because this bigger filter build could be something you're really interested in. We're going to do lettuce rafts. We're going to do flood drain beds in here. We're going to do vertical growing. Um, we're just going to experiment a lot within this space. So make sure you subscribe and don't miss any of those. This particular video is a build of a greenhouse and it's not just any greenhouse it's not a cheapo greenhouse with a like a hoop house or something this is a legit windows greenhouse so i got glass windows in here currently this greenhouse is holding better heat than outside though outside is getting pretty cold pretty quickly and this video i'm going to walk you step by step how to build this guy so let's not mess around anymore let's get into it So I got a smoking deal on a bunch of wood, so I'll be using that for most of the lumber that I'll need in this greenhouse. Plus I'll have a whole bunch of extra for other projects. Okay, the first thing that I did was I went and looked at all of these windows that I collected and I measured the exact size of each one of them and how many of that size I have. I have different style of windows. I do want to be specific on, on that. So I've got windows with frames. I've got windows without the frame. And then I've got just glass pane. So I'll show how to install those different windows into this greenhouse. Those are my sizes of windows that I have to work with. So then I tried to start to configure the windows to the size of of greenhouse that I was working with. I knew I had space on the side of the house for a nine foot by 16 foot greenhouse. Um, and so I wanted to use all that much space. Based off of this footprint, I had to try to use these window sizes to best fit. The first configuration I came up with, basically I was using all eight of these sizes, which are similar sizes in the front and then a smaller window and then I was going to have to figure out how to use the other windows for the rest of the part of the house. But uh, this wasn't working out for the side sections as well. So with this plan I was going to try to find a sliding glass door to put on the side uh, closest to the chicken coop which is the entrance side for me from the backyard. But then I needed another one of those same size windows next to that and I, was, I don't have those so I wasn't able to use the windows that I had, I had to get different windows to make that work. So I had to reconfigure the front to be a little different. I have a sliding glass door or two panes of the sliding glass door, um, but no frame because the frame got destroyed when they removed them from the house. So this and this one are sliding glass door panes um, and I'll just frame them in. And then these four are four of those smaller windows which I think this configuration works out a lot better with full windows all the way down on two sides of this thing and pretty close to all the way down on, the, on these two. So I liked this configuration a little better. It feels a little more neat. To make sure that I was measuring everything correctly, I went ahead and drew this up on the computer so that I wouldn't be off on some of these dimensions. So I did that. So I got this all figured out and now we move to the individual walls because the other prints are per wall so that I can frame up based off of these dimensions. Um, but basically this is the configuration. This is, this is the look I'm going with here. I'm going to have a sliding window on the far side and a glass door on the, the side of, closest to the chicken coop. Two smaller windows. It's the same size as those ones. So the first 
wall that I'm going to build is the nine foot wall. And that's the back of the greenhouse that's against the house. They're just 24 inch on center studs. Okay, this is not a video of me cutting boards. This is a video of how to build a greenhouse with windows. So this will be the last of you see me running my chop saw. I am getting these boards cut for the nine foot wall on the side closest to the house. Okay, I got this thing framed up. I didn't show it because this is pretty simple. Uh, I'll get this thing out of my way and then I'll move on to the next one. The next frame job is going to be the other 16 foot wall, the shorter end of the wall with all the windows in it. Basically, I've set up all of my cut lengths that I need to cut. So I'll go and get that all cut up and get this framed up to look just like this. I forgot to kick the camera back on for the beginning of this wall, but so far I just got the outside framing done and I'm about to start this inside part right here, which is going to go right inside of the wall there. So I'll get the camera set up and start working on that. Here I do have to make sure that the spacing is correct for when I do put those windows up here. Next we're going to do the wall that's closest to the street. Again, just like with the other wall with the windows in it, I'm just going to cut up based off of these dimensions and get this framed up just as I'm showing in this right here. Last, I'm going to put together my door wall. Same idea as before, get it all framed up and then I'll get it in place. Okay, so now it's time to start putting this thing together. So I have that nine foot wall sitting here and I'm going to put some nine foot siding on. This was probably the most expensive portion of this project that I bought was this nine foot pieces of siding. And then I'll get it all painted up. I'm gonna have it painted before I stand the wall up because it, I don't have a lot of space between the house and this wall. The other thing is, is every one of these pieces that I lay down after I've got it in place, I lay a bead of caulking on the overlap edge before I sit the next piece on top of that. Once it's all dried up, we're going to stand this up and get our other walls in place. Mm -hmm. 
Notice on this one, I don't have anything framed right here. Um, I do have the other pieces all put together and that go inside here. I'm just going to add them after I get this attached. Next thing we're going to do is bring in the other 16 foot wall. It's just a uh, 7 foot tall. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get the other portion of this framing in for this window here. Before I attach these two walls in this corner, I'm going to make sure that the window openings are square so that when I go to put the windows in there, they have even spacing around them. So I have been putting siding down around the bottom of this thing. So it's already gone all the way around the whole outside except for this wall here. Once I get all that on there then I'm gonna cut these windows out on this side. Next thing I gotta do is get the end trusses in place. Um, I'm going to do those with some plates that I had sitting around for quite some time. Let's we'll see how sturdy I can get it. Here's what I did. I just used this guy on the end face and it seems to be pretty sturdy. And then I used this little L on the inside. Once I get the rest of everything in place, it should sturdy up even more. I gotta slap the rest of the siding on around the windows. I'm sealing up the inside of all of the windows right now before I get windows in place. I did go ahead and install the one window that still slides open because it has a frame. I'll show you real quick before I get the trim around it. It's just got a frame and you can see that it is screwed into the studs. This will be the only window that actually slides open and that's just so if I need extra ventilation through this greenhouse I can do that by opening the window. Alright, quick update of where we're at. The exterior has been painted. It's all installed sideways and mimicking the house over there. So I'll be doing some cross style trim. The roofing's gotta go in. I painted the trusses up there. They're still not set though, they're just sitting up there. So the next thing I'm gonna do is actually get those installed correctly. The only, the only two that are set are the two end pieces, which you already saw. So I gotta get these all set to the right length kicked out here and then the right distance between each of them. So I'm using hurricane ties to connect my trusses to my rafters. I've used them in the past for this type of work and they work just fine so that's why I picked them. They're cheap and I do the job. Next thing I gotta do is measure between my trusses and cut my boards that I'm going to attach between those. I gotta create a closure on the ends and also support for the polycarbonate roofing. And then I've gotta also put supports through the center. I'll break this up into three sections so that I have support throughout for that roofing.
Notice I put these supports through the middle, now it's broken into those three, three sections. We're jumping ahead a little bit because it's getting a little boring to see me just working at fast pace. So now that I've started getting these in there, I will start getting some of the roofing in place. Basically when you're installing this, you're just going to overlap one hump over the last hump. I'm also using a foam to install it, so it's a foam that goes with this product that follows the contour of the roofing and seals the ends and gives it support for your hardware. I'm going to pre-drill for the roofing screws and then I'm going to mount the, the roofing through the foam into the lumber holding this roofing on. I want to put enough tension on it so that it's holding the roofing in place but I don't want to crush the foam underneath of it. So put this drip edge in, I just slid it under the foam and the roofing up against the siding. And I'm actually installing this one on the flat. I know everything else should be installed on the peaks of this roofing. You don't want to install on the flats. This particular one lands all the way across the stud, so I am going to install this edge onto the flat, and it's also going to hold that drip edge in place for me. And I'm doing the same thing on the other side. Okay, we got some rain after getting that roof on and uh, noticed that the mud was getting pretty bad over here. We had intended to put this retaining wall in right after doing the trees, but we got so busy trying to get this thing put together that we didn't really work on this. So the boys and I just got this retaining wall in uh, before the rain hits again. and. Uh, it's also much easier to walk back and forth along the greenhouse now that we have this nice walkway. So I'm cutting these right to sides instead of undersized to fit nice. So we have So after I've got the tall pieces in place, I can start measuring the short bottoms so I can go cut and create the bottom frame section. So these are two by fours, so they're three and a half inches. I'm gonna cut them down to three inch actually, so I can cut off that radius. Next thing I gotta do is kick the angle over to 12 degrees and I'm gonna set my stop to zero. I want this sharp edge to be a, a sharp corner. There we go, once those are nice and painted up, this edge will go against the window and the water will run off away from the window. On the window panes, or if it does have a frame around it, I have to get it cleaned up because these are repurposed windows. I'm going to then caulk the frame, so I'm going to put a nice bead of silicone seal around the frame, and I'm going to use some shims at the bottom, balance it on those shims, center the bottom, push it into the silicone bead, and then at the top I will make sure that I'm also even. Equal gaps is what I'm trying to accomplish on both sides and then push it into place. Next thing I gotta do is just put some blocks in there, push them up against the between the window and the frame on the other side, 
and nail them into place. I'll do that in multiple locations around the window to make sure that it's set. Because I didn't show it before, I'm breaking the excess off of these so that they don't fall. And then I can sit them on this windowsill, a balance there while I grab the window and sit it on top. <laughs> For the windows that do have a frame around them, I'm doing the same thing. It, it's really the same. This is a sliding glass door pane. It's one half of the sliding glass door. I'm just doing exactly like I did the other windows. I made sure it was nice and clean, and I get the silicone around the edge, put it on a shim, and then I make sure I tack it into place with the blocks. This is the other sliding glass door now, and I'm doing the same thing with it. Okay, now I'm moving on to putting these bottom frames in place. These are, these are here with that slope so that the rain sheds away from the window. Silicone bead, press it up against the window, tack it into place. Here I am using the uh, spray foam insulation around the windows and all of the openings to seal up the greenhouse, make sure that I don't have any leaking air. I'll also do this the same thing around the door when I get that put in. So the next thing I'm gonna do is run silicone beads on the outside of the windows. I'm gonna make sure that they're sealed from out there and that no rain gets stuck in there. I'll just make sure I do that on all these windows. So I totally forgot to turn the camera on while I was installing this door. I just got a really simple exterior door. It is painted white on one side. I wanted a window in it, but that's okay. This will work, I just need to get the door on here. If you've not installed one of these before, basically you start on the hinge side and you use door shims to get yourself somewhat equal. And then using your bubble level, you just make sure that you continue putting the door shims in, creating an equal, perfectly vertical side. And then you come to the other side and do the same thing so that when you shut that door, it shuts nicely. Just like I get a knob on there, but everything seals really good. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. I, I cannot believe you hung around this long. That's insane that you were able to. And if you did, make sure you subscribe because you are diehard. Don't forget to go check out all of our other videos. We've got lots of cool videos all the time. We'll see you in one of those videos.